want to get a nice conversation here going. Yael Osowski is with us, Dectory Debet. Deputy Director of Consumer Choice Center, and James Chernowski, Senior Policy Analyst, Technology and Innovation at Americans for Prosperity. Thank you both for being here. I mean, right away, our minds go to OpenAI and NVIDIA and, and so on. Um, James, I'll start with you. You know, when is it too much? I mean, we need to be cautious, but is there too much, um, you know, in the antitrust regulating? Yeah, I think that that's a great question. And at the end of the day, I think that that is the risk that we're running right now in the country here is that because we're having such a scrutiny on these big technology companies, that it actually threatens our ability for these very same companies and others to become competitive in the long run and continue the United States leadership in this promising technology. Um, when we're looking at what's going on with this complaint here, this is just the latest trend of, of just a lot of repeat actions from these regulators. Um, when we're looking at NVIDIA, Microsoft, OpenAI, these companies are all leading, but they're not guaranteed by any stretch of the definition to go and remain the leaders in this promising technology moving forward. There's a lot of robust competition yeah. here, and some of this might be just a bit yeah. premature, Nicole. Yeah, and look, Yael, I think you you agree. It's risking our global competitiveness, you said. Um, with China there, it's just, uh, tell me more about your thoughts. Yeah, I think really what we have here is, is a big ideological fight. There's a lot of great tech innovators who are providing all kinds of dividends, all kinds of great products for consumers. And while many of those American tech innovators would love to reach the globe, they'd be able to love to bring their products to market all around the world, they're being kneecapped by our own regulatory agencies. They're being kneecapped by the DOJ. And you have the rise of Chinese firms that aren't going to be held or restrained in the same way. They're going to be much more command and controlled by Beijing and the Chinese Communist Party. So in this scenario, we're not looking good for tech innovation in the United States. It's amazing because, I mean, you talked about how it just expands unabated. And, um, you know, at, at some point, do they really surpass you? Are you worried that we're really going to be left in the dust or no? I mean, the one thing that we do have here in the United States is a great capital markets. We have great ability for companies to raise money. There's a lot of great innovation and there's competition. That's something that we do have that's very good. How do we maintain that competition is the next question. Some people have the ideological view that it should be through the regulatory agencies, through the FTC, the DOJ. Others believe that we should allow these markets to exist, to strike their deals, offer their products to consumers. All this stuff is happening in real time. We're not able to get a real analysis of what the market will look like, not even in six months or a year from now. Let's allow consumers to actually use those products first before we start trying to clamp down, because otherwise China's right there behind us. We still have a small advantage right Right now in the states but you know it could be around the corner and you know for example we just saw nvidia and you noted this james in your notes crossing three trillion so you have microsoft up there in fact nvidia beats out um apple but so many great names in that list no doubt and so at this point while we're concerned about protection of the consumer i mean are there any specific investigations that jump out at you that maybe seem too much or too frivolous yeah i think i think that you know these these latest investigations that are getting announced here from the ftc and the doj are the step too far because it's just assuming that the marketplace for artificial intelligence is going to be stagnant and that these same technology companies are going to be the ones leading the way here. And in some respects, they are doing a lot of really good work, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that their status is guaranteed. Google, for example, is one of the big tech companies that has struggled, I think, quite mightily with figuring out how to go and leverage AI in a consumer-facing manner that's actually been productive for them. Uh, notably, they had their, their pizza cheese sticking on with glue recommendation that their AI I answer kind of gave out not too long ago, right? So to pretend that this is something that is set in stone and that is a foregone conclusion, I think is where there's a fundamental misstep here from the regulatory agencies. Mind you, Nicole, the United States markets led the entire world with over $67 billion in, in investments in artificial intelligence in 2023. So a lot of those investments are gonna take time to go and bear fruit. But that also means that it's going to bear competition and new kinds of opportunities. And as your previous guests kind of highlighted in other segments, it's not just in the consumer facing side, but it's also in healthcare, in cars, et cetera, right? So stop thinking about it in this one singular lens and realize it for the much broader use case application that actually is present with artificial intelligence. 
Yeah, yeah I'll, um, we're out of time, but I did th find your note about, you know, the antitrust action on all of this is premature, not needed. In fact, you said markets will solve these problems better than the FTC lawyers. I'm sorry to paraphrase what you said, but we are out of time, and I thought that was a good point as well, and I wanted to get that in. Thank you both, Yael and James. Thank you. Yael Osowski of Consumer Choice Center and James Chernowski, Americans for Prosperity.